Hello everybody, Reggie Time here, and today we are going to be playing one table of 50 and L Snap on Triple Eight. Uh, I put a little bit of money in there earlier in the week just to play some hands to um, get some um, material to record for some talk and grind sessions in Discord. Um, I've managed to spin that up a little bit. I have exactly $150 now, so I have three buy-ins for these games. And I'm going to use that $150 just to one table snap, um, mostly just as a as like a, a practice thing. Just get used to, um, well, not get used to, that's the wrong way of putting it. Just just play, I mean, I'm trying to play more 50 and L on Sky right now. Uh, but the games are always that good. So when the games aren't good, I'm just going to be playing some 50 and L snap. If I lose all $150, I don't really care. Hopefully I won't. But I'm going to be um, using it just to, just to like practice playing a little bit higher um, in an environment where I could take my time over every hand. Because I'm only one tabling because we have no money and um, we have no money on the site. And I, I want to just like try and add more bits of aggression to my game post flop. I'm going to be doing some stuff that probably isn't solver approved, or maybe it is. I don't know. Solvers do some weird shit. So um, yeah, we're just going to be playing. We're going to be playing our usual relatively tight ranges pre flop, and then looking for spots to maybe find a bit more aggression post flop that I don't always find when I'm playing more tables. So this could be really spewy. It could be really shit. Um, but who knows? Let's get stuck in. I'm going to be playing for about 35 to 40 minutes because I'm expecting a, a young lady um, who we support from home to turn up at my house around 12 o'clock-ish. So we're probably going to play till 12 o'clock. It's currently 11.22. So we're going to be about 35 to 40 minutes in, assuming I don't go broke before then. Um, we're not playing with the hood because hoods depress the shit out of me, basically. Uh, let's turn this down. We don't want the volume to be too high on the on the table sounds. Uh, yeah, hoods depress me because I know everyone's a fucking like knitting these games or most players are nits. I don't need it ramming down my throat in um, hood stats because it just makes me not want to play when I see depressing stats. So I, I kind of just bedding my head in the sand and we're going to just like assume most players are relatively weak tight. And then... Um, yeah, hopefully someone's going to have a hand here that Kings is better than. Get some action. We get a pretty safe flop as far as kings go. Um, this isn't a ball we should be betting with a particular high frequency. So when we do bet it, I'm going to use a pretty biggish sizing. And we take it down, which I would have liked a little bit of action there, but I'm going to try and get as much from hands like Pocket eight through pocket jacks there as quickly as we can before the board gets too scary for our opponent. Four, five suited. Probably a hand we're going to defend if it's just a single raise. Small raise, small three, but I really would like to see a flop here, but... We're not closing the action, so sadly, Knuckles is going to fuck us over there from seeing a flop. I played this game for around three and a half hours last night, and I think all in all, I won about a buy-in. It should have been more, but um, some tilted Canadian cold called a three bet with ace five off when I had ace king late last night, and then um, they flopped two pairs when I flopped one pair on I think it was ace five x. It was rather disappointing. Full buying got spunked away there. Um, queen three suited facing a min raise. 
probably shouldn't be trying to take a flop, but versus the min race, we're closing the action. And we have two players with less than 100 bigs, so don't think it can be terrible. Obviously, you know, we have a really easy fold when we completely do. Queen nine suited is going to be a hand again. We're going to be looking to play for a single raise with this player in the big blind who's not playing a full stack. Again, this could be a mistake calling this out the small blind. Well, it not could be, probably is a mistake. But I am keen to try and play a pot with anyone that has less than 100 big blinds. Um, I think we might go for a check raise on this flop. Bet's pretty big. But, um, yeah, it seemed like a flop away to check race from the off, so I think we will. He comes in with a three bet, which I'm not sure he really should be doing when he gets raised on this board. Maybe he should. I don't know. Um, I mean, we don't really care because we have an easy fall, but didn't feel like a spot where we get three bet there too often. Felt like a spot where we'd either get called or... See some faults. Surprised to see the three bet coming in. Maybe we shouldn't be check raising King King X pods against an under the gun pre flop raiser. But as I said, there's going to be. I'm going to. I am trying to find some more spots to be aggressive. There is likely to be some small spew in this video. Hopefully, not too much. Like super bad spew. But um, you never know. When I'm trying new things and try to do things I don't normally do, who knows what can possibly go wrong or maybe go right. We might just play bad and get lucky. We might play quite well and get unlucky. Really care either way. I don't count this money as part of my bankroll. Um, it's just money I've put in for like development purposes. Go with the three bet here with the ace six suited. Don't really want to flat. An opponent calls. Not much going on for there apart from the backdoor flush draw. It's a spot where we can just bet smallish and only continue on turns that that seem good for us. Get check raised again on a paired board. And it's fucking huge again. This feels like it can't be good. I'm not trying to be salty, but I'm really not sure this should be a thing. So, um, again, makes it easier for us because we just have a trivial fold. For the second time, we've had like been check raised or three bit on a paired board. And I'm, I mean, maybe, maybe that's it's something we should be seeing a lot, and I just don't know. But it doesn't seem that clever to me. Again, we're going to go with another three bit here. This is the player who just check raised his last hand, I believe. Yep. We faced a cold four bet this time, and we're going to get out of the way. Things are going well. It's a good start. Come on, reload, kick in. Thank you. It's a good start to the session. We've been aggressive three times, and we've had our ass handed to us three times. Uh, do you think we're gonna we're gonna try again? I'm gonna go with the screen. I mean, we could just flat here actually, closing the action. But we're gonna try and continue being aggressive. Get two calls. What's a what's an exceptionally interesting flop? We got. Well, we're just gonna raise here and get it in. Uh, what size? Don't think it really matters. We're not going to flop much better than this when we three bet the ace ten suited, and we 
get the immediate fold, which I wasn't really expecting. I was expecting to have to make the best hand there. So that was a nice pickup. Nine five suited again. Probably a hammer going to defend to a single raise, assuming it's smaller than three x. Two point five x. We're going to be defending unless it gets three bet. So we are going to take a flop, and we're not going to flop, especially well multi way out of position with only shitty back doors. Just going to get out of the way. Small three bet from Rob Roy, who appears to have been relatively active so far. Um, we're not going to fall bet here because getting jammed on would absolutely stink. We're getting a really good price just to try and see a flop. We flop reasonably well. I'm going to just lead out here, I think. Let me take it down. It's not a spot there with like top pair, top kicker, when I'm going to want to like, be taking too many check call guessy lines. I'd rather raise there. And to be honest, I would have folded to the pre-flop raise. I had it three bet, and I would have got it in against the guy who had the 40 bigs on the button. Um, I think it's a spot where the when he when he gets cold called by the guy out there, he's not going to see bet light at all. So when he does see bet, I just think we're going to be facing some very strong hands. I think he's going to check back a lot and then there's going to be turn cards we're not going to want to deal with. We're going to get confused if we check. He checks and then the other guy bets. So I'll just um, take matters into my own hand and lead there. Um, might be very, very shit. But um, it felt like it was the right thing to do in a vacuum. I'm not going to see about our second pair here. We are going to call the turn if he leads. We're going to bet the turn if he checks. He overbets the turn, which feels a bit weird. I'm just going to force the turn over bet there. I think it's not a bluff anywhere near at a high enough frequency. And he's just very likely to bet the river again. And do I want to be putting like 15, 16 blinds or more in with second pair? Nah, not really. I think the amount of times I've called over bets with bluff catchers in poker in general and turned up to what the best hand um, tells me that we don't want to be calling over bets very often. This is a weird, ridiculously sized three bet. And then we get the cold call here. This is just a sizing thing. We're going to go pretty big. And if Tosha doesn't fold, then... Off to the races. That is not the flop that I wanted to see. And he just does this. Every bone in my body is screaming rip here. We have two overs, back doors. He doesn't have any sets or he shouldn't have any sets. Yep, I'm not having this. I'm not having it. Hopefully we have 
some equity when we get cold and we're not drawing completely dead. And he just fold. And again, that could be very spewy there, but um, it's just going to be so hard for him to have like a really strong hand. He min three bet, called a four bet, then just wants to donk on that board. I mean, I'm going to hope when we just call, he's just got like one pair and we have reasonable equity. And he's just going to hopefully fold a decent chunk of the time because his line looks like bullshit. Ringo Kid, I'm going to just quickly turn my hood back on to see what Ringo Kid's up to. Yeah, it looks like he's a maniac. That's good. It's good to know. I think I'm actually going to check... Oh, I was thinking about check raising here. Um... Race for value here with the S-Jack. Be very disappointed if we get three bet. Calls. Do not like that turn. That turn seems pretty ugly. Um, I think we bet here. We sometimes get raised a decent amount of the time, which I don't want to happen. So I don't want to get raised. It feels like it's getting thin now. He's don't flop. He's any calls, and the nine of hearts comes, which doesn't feel like a good card for us. So we're going to check back and I think we're going to have to call this river if he leads out not going to like it hopefully he's got like queen jack king jack king 10 something like that oh, oh he's got a 4-3 okay that's fine we're going to happily stick the green tag on you now chief felt like a safe river and he was actually the worst card in the fucking deck for us waiting here just to steal the blinds. It's going to be really annoying if we wait for like over 30 seconds and then some cut raises. Feels like a total waste of time. Um, is queen suited. It's like a very easy three bet against someone who isn't reloading. Cold call from Troix. And then we get a truly diabolical flop. I think Troix is going to get a green tag too. Not reloading. Cold call in three bets out of the big blind. Um, I've seen enough already to know that Troix is not an especially um, adept player. And then it goes bet raise. And pull this over here. I'll tell you what they both had if it goes to showdown. Uh, Troix just donk folded. So who knows? Who knows what anybody had there? I certainly fucking don't. And I'm the one that's like supposed to try and know. Don't think we're going to see about this multi-way. Going to be really careful in multi-way pots. He's got to play pretty damn tight. With just back doors. I'm not going to be looking to put much aggression in again and like bet and a raise. These games seem pretty aggressive, but from so far from what I've seen, not in a good way. And there's a lot of aggression in these games so far today that we've seen, and none of it has seemed like it's that good. So I think we might be in a good game right now. Um, just back doors here, but it's a flop that we're going to want to see better with a pretty high frequency. Way to go, we'll probably get raised off our hand. We do turn a pair, which allows us to check back. I don't think I'm going to call River. We check back here and we don't improve when he leads. I think we're just going to fold. Certainly going to fold on that card. Not even a decision. Don't care how small he bets. I'm not going to second guess it. I made my mind up 
that I was going to fall to a river bit, and then when that comes, I'm just going to fall to a river bit. And if he's like small bet bluffing, then good for him. He gets to win. Not going to second guess those situations. Against Rob Roy, who we know is confirmed will. This is not a board that we're going to be seeing betting with just two overs. We do have a back door to go with it. Against Rob Roy, we're going to be just betting strong made hands and hands that have good equity when called. Is that even reasonable? Not in love with my line there, but if I if I like decide that this is my strategy against a certain opponent, then I do tend to try and stick to it until it's kind of shown to me that perhaps I need to adjust my strategy. I think we have a check call here against Rob Roy maybe even just a thin value bet I actually think it's probably more of a thin value bet I think Rob Roy is maybe the type of player who could just peel random shit on that board just because he just doesn't believe he's got like a jack 10 or something like that maybe he just peels anyway That is a top pair. Again, it's a multi-way pot. I'm not expecting this guy to see bet too light. So again, I think I'm just going to donkey. I think I'd be more inclined to check and call if I had a club. It's going to be hard for him to get out of line with Rob Roy in the pot. He calls... I think we just bet again here and then just reassess rivers. You can have some better hands, you can have some worse hands, you can have like pocket queens, jack x, some draws. Just call again. River eight. Feels like everything's probably missed. Do we just block here? I mean, I think we butchered this hand a little bit by donking. But um, I was kind of more just wanting to try and get some value from Rob Roy. I think we just block here. I think. Do we? Do we check call? No. Eh, don't know. Don't know. So we'll go with the block. So what calls calls and wants to raise this river? I think we might have a calling situation here we don't block but well, we do block 10 9 we don't block clubs uh, eight nine wow never mind nice answer probably absolutely butchered the shit out of that probably was never a donk but um there you go there's that river raise where your opponent can have plenty of bluffs, but then just never does. That that was exactly that spot. When he raises there, he's kind of representing some strong hands or missed draws. And didn't feel like the way the hand was played out, that he had too many strong hands. Obviously, trip eights is a strong hand. Uh, do we want a three bet here and just get it in? No. Folding seems shit though, so we're just going to call. I think against this stack, which could a check raise. Okay, we're not. I guess against this stack, which could a check raise. Then. You're only going to go small. 
Try to get caught by some worse kings, 10x draws, etc. If he jams, then at this point we're going to be priced in to call it off. Six seems a perfectly safe card. And bet small, and then just shove rivers. And take it down. Nice result. Rather than the call, I think, but it's a nice enough result. Fuck me, my phone is ringing. That can wait for 10 minutes. Cannot remember the last time I made a video where. Either someone didn't knock at my door or make my fucking phone ring. It is quite remarkable how often that happens. Quite remarkable. Don't always raise a small person under the gun, but with two players in the blind with less than 100 bigs. Seems like a reasonable time to do it. Get a very small three bet from someone who may or may not be some asshole um, short stacker. Snap checks. We're not going to fall for that. you some absolute scumbag ukrainian maybe maybe not quote unquote pro short stacker can just get to fuck um i know some people who i chat with aren't especially fond of my attitude towards people who buy into cash game short stack they think i should just like have the opinion of it's their money they can do what the fuck they want um, but yeah I don't, you know, fair enough, that's their opinion, they're entitled to it. But in my opinion, they're just pure fucking scum. They are the bottom of the poker gene pool, in my opinion. And the sooner sites prevent cunts from doing stuff like that by just invoking very strict rat holing policies, the better my world will be. Fuck cunting short stackers who rat hole. Absolute cunts. Worse than ISIS. Hey, do, 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 do. I think we're going to go with the small ISO here on the bottom with the 10 7 suited against the early position limp. Interesting flop. Not especially good for our range, especially against two players who call one over, backdoor, flush draw, and a gut shot. But both these guys have stacks that can just jam if we see bet. So we're going to take a more safer route and just check back, try and improve a little bit. Not in love with this situation, but we do now have a top pair and a good shot. So we're going to see one more. If this guy leads out again, he just has to be strong. And we are going to fold because there's just no way he can be weak. It leads out twice into two players. Um, I don't think there's like any situation where he's like weak there. <laughs> I thought suited, that is a good shot. Which might be a spot where we, as long as our opponent doesn't raise, where we just triple barrel. Not given the opportunity to do that, and not disappointed that we weren't given the opportunity, because we'd be happy to take it down with our five high there.
This guy might be another one of those fucking... No, he's from the UK. So he's more like, way more likely just to be someone who's very shit than someone who's pro. I, thought I saw the name, I thought that looks Ukrainian. Or that looks Eastern European, but then I saw he's from the UK. He's probably just someone who's very shit. Um, again, multi-way park. Can't afford to play. Pretty honestly. Against two players who don't have chips. Second time this guy's gone with the lead out versus flop check backs. Maybe something. If I play against him regularly, I can try and use against him going forward. Maybe check back some stronger hands and let him just start blasting. If that's his strategy. Or maybe he's just had a couple of good hands. Too early to know. Again, let's just put the hood on for one second to see what's going on with this Shreko character. 35-18, so inconclusive as yet. Uh, led into by Rob Roy. No pair, no draw, not even a back door. Annoying, easy fold. If this is the state of these games all of the time, or a lot of the time, um, then I don't think value is going to be too hard to come by in these games. I mean, we've been so far in this video, we just haven't made a hand. So we, you know, we, we haven't had an opportunity to um, find out how easy it's going to be to get value in these games. It feels like um, feels like there's a sort of action that we want going on. Sometimes you can play in these games in like the pretty kind of tightish, and then the only the only time there's aggression really is when there's like a cooler going on or or what have you. But um, this it just feels from what I've seen so far last night and today. Not sure why my raise hasn't gone in there. Yeah, it's gone in now. <clears throat> that you might get the kind of action you want in these games rather than the kind of action that you, you don't necessarily want. But see, it's, it's way too early to tell. <clears throat> and I certainly don't have any plans to like grind these games regularly. It's very much just, I have my $150. I'm going to grind until I'm broke or until we spin it up a little bit. And if we do spin it up a little bit, maybe then there is an opportunity. So there's absolutely no reason to race here. This check race doesn't make a great deal of sense. If he's got us, he's got us. But there's no reason to race. Does check, which makes me think he's absolutely full of shit. I'm going to do some silly here and just bet super tiny. Maybe it induces another race from him. Maybe he just calls with total rubbish. Um, I mean... <laughs> We've been double check raised. Uh, I mean, obviously we don't want any checks again. Should we give him the chance to triple check raise? Let's give him the chance to triple check raise. He just calls in the end. <laughs> so we probably lost eight big blinds in value there. But um, I wish we wanted to give him the chance to triple. I've never been triple check raised. Wanted to give him that opportunity. What did he have? Ace queen. I don't think he played his hand particularly well there. Um, and nah, we're not going to open there, give him the chance to jam and then it'll give us a sad call with Queen High. What a shame we couldn't get the triple check raise calling. That would have been quite the thing. Although we should just have jammed the river. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, we should just jam the river. But I just wanted it to happen. It was worth risking whatever it was. Four dollars of missed value. Red duo. I know you. You're Ryan from the Facebook group. Uh, well, I'm going to set mine here. We overlimped our hand. Our rage is very, very face up. The 
this could be super spewy, but we're going to race here. Try and represent the fuck all. Um, yeah, don't want to continue with the call. So, fuck it, we'll raise. Don't want to fold. And I don't want to call. So that doesn't leave many other options. When he does call, he's going to have king x here, queen, queen, jack, jack, etc. Um, we could get him off stuff like queens and jacks. We're not going to get him off a king. Uh, the five's a really bad card because now it removes... I mean, pocket five's going to be a big part of my range. It wants to raise that flop and now it removes some combos of that. Um, Leafless Tree's just going to win. Good for you, sir. Good for you. Ryan goes with the small three bit. And then Rob Roy cold calls up. We're going to have to fall bet this hand now. Don't necessarily want to get it in against Ryan here, but once we fall bet, I think we're probably going to have to. But to be honest, I hope Ryan just fucks up out of the way here and we get Rob Roy. Wouldn't hate just taking it down. I mean, if Ryan shoves, he's going to be so fucking strong. He just calls. Don't put a cunt of a flop down. Just let me see a nice low. I don't want to see a jack. I don't want to see an ace. Don't want either of those things. That's about as good a flop as we could have hoped to see. Um, try to think of a size here. I mean, I'm going to see a bit here. I just have no bluffs. So we're just going to go with the all of it option, I think. And if Ryan's trapped us pre-flop with like aces or kings, then good for him. Take it down again. Maybe that over bet was a bit too excessive. But just felt like we had enough for one bet. You know, it's, it's a board where we four bet pre. We have almost zero bluffs on that board. <clears throat> Any of our bluffs are just going to contain like very strong flush draws. And that's about that. Um, so it just felt like it was a spot where we wanted to use a big size and given the SPR, it's going to be the biggest size of all. We have like 1.25x pot, something like that, 1.2x pot. Maybe sometimes Rob Roy calls off with worse there, puts it on Ace King and decides to hero call with pocket tens or whatever. Who knows? I don't. I'm hoping for some feedback. Um, if guard doesn't raise here, we're going to, but guard does, so we'll just get out of the way. And I think we're going to sit out next big blank, because Ash is going to be here any minute, and it's raining outside. So do not want to keep her waiting on the doorstep when she arrives, because I'm finishing up a video or whatever. Assuming I don't go broke, uh, there could be more of these coming your way because it's something I'm going to continue doing until I go broke. That's for certain. Um, there's a very good chance that I do go broke at some point. We'll be got uh, mid twenty eight dollars that session. So now I've got like hundred and seventy eight. So I'd say my favourite to go broke or we spin it up, but you never know, you know. Um, yeah, if this video gets. If it's popular, if you get some likes, some comments, etc., and it's something you guys want to see more of, I'm willing to do it until I bust this account. Um, or spin it up, who knows? I mean, if we get this to... Where we are, here, get off. If we get this to, like, five or 600, then who knows? Maybe we've got a chance of, yeah, one table in 50 and L. Could that be a way to make money? Um, who knows? Because we look at this, and I'm getting, whatever, 200 hands an hour, maybe. Um, which is the same as maybe three tabling on Sky. Maybe not quite. Maybe like two and a half tabling. But like my financial needs from poker are make anything upwards of five, six hundred pounds a month. Um, so who knows? 
is it possible in this game to one table 15 on snap and make that kind of money maybe i don't know um but we've got 178 dollars to see what may or may not be possible this could well be zero very soon um who knows but yeah i think i'm probably gonna do another one of these tomorrow if not tomorrow definitely friday assuming i haven't busted the account in the meantime so i hope you guys enjoyed it um good luck if you're punting royal ascot again today doesn't seem to be a ton of interest in it in between my circle of friends um, which is disappointing because it's a it's a fun meeting but yeah good luck if you're doing that good luck with your poker please do comment like share subscribe all of those things and who knows when i'll be back with another video but hopefully soon enough Take care, everybody, and bye-bye for now.